Hi guys, how do you do? Welcome to the show program with us. Now for today, we're going to continue with our Android JSON tutorial series of tutorials. In the previous tutorial, of course, we looked at how to work with JSON and a simple spinner. Today, we're going to see how to work with JSON data and of course a simple grid view. Now for us, this is going to be simple. Th right here, this is the JSON data that we're going to be working with. Of course, it's available online. Just point your browser to this particular site. It's a public data, so of course, you can also have access to it. Now for us, this is simple, the whole of this one right here, of course, uh, this is a JSON array, it contains all our data right here. A JSON data array consists of JSON objects, for instance, this one right here uh, is a JSON object. Of course, uh, it's encapsulated under this particular brace right here, and then the JSON objects are separated using commas. And you can see, for instance, in this case, a JSON object simply represents a single user with an ID name etc. Now we're having several of them, around 10 of them. So these are the things we shall be passing this particular data. Of course, JSON array, this is what we shall be downloading. Then we pass it uh, right here. We get the JSON objects. We get specifically the name components right here, the name fields. Then, of course, we shall be showing it in our simple grid view. Now for us, yes, this is it. This is what we're going to look at. Okay, and then in fact we'll come over right here. You can see our grid view is empty. If you come click our fab button over right here, downloading JSON, it downloads a JSON very fast. Then of course you can see the first one right here. You can see this one. Okay, so this is it. This is what we're going to be looking at. We're going to see how to uh, get this particular JSON data, pass it, and then get in fact the name components. I show you now simple grid view. So, guys, welcome. We we'll get started. I require you to do, of course, to create your Android Studio project. Right here, I've already created my project. Once we've created our project uh, inside our build or we really don't need any uh, special dependency apart from the support design libraries, which, of course, we'll be using because of the floating action button. Now, so let's just uh, have that one over there. And then of course we come to our Android manifest.xml over right here we need to add this particular permission for accessing the internet because we, we shall be opening our data from internet then of course we move over to our layouts which is very simple we're having two layouts activity main okay which is for content main but then inside our content we're simply doing our grid view please make sure that you give it an id i've given mine three columns that's it that's the only things that we need to set our stuff okay now of course the next thing we move over to our class of right here four classes connector first of all are uh, the first three classes i'm going to wrap them inside this particular package that i'm calling mjson these are the classes so of course we're going to help us download and pass our json data now for us you can see we're having the connector class the da json downloader and then json passer and then of course our main activity so what's the purpose for our connector class well this is the class so we shall be downloading our data okay not downloading the our data sorry this is the class that's going to help us establish our connection to our network okay because remember for us to download data we have to establish the connection we're going to be using the http url connection then of course we're going to be making a get request to the server now with a get request right here you just it's a read only request we get our data we read that particular data then of course we pass it without modifying uh, anything of that particular data so that's it we shall be doing that one inside our connector class then of course we're going to be moving to a json downloader json downloader this is the class we shall be downloading our data for us we'll be downloading the background thread we'll download that particular data once downloaded then we pass it to json parser which of course is also going to pass it also in the background thread okay so let's come over right here get started with the json uh, our connector class the first thing we're simply going to have one simple method right here it's a static method it's going to return for us an object we have called it connect you can see the method is taking a string that we're calling json url so the first thing we do inside our try catch block we try to instantiate our java.net.url passing in our json url which is a string okay the url that shall be pointing to now if we having right here we're also going to be make sure that we catch a malformed url exception this is in situation where of course you specify the wrong url format otherwise we continue we instantiate uh, we get our instance of our http url connection 
by, by of course opening url and calling the open connection of our url java.net.url class now this is going to give us a url connection which of course we know is a super class of http url connection so we cast it to http url connection so then we can set our uh, request method what shall we be uh, which request shall we be making well it's a good request and of course our timeout is 15 k ms and also read timeout also 15 k ms this connection is going to support it's going to support input that's why we set it to true because remember we are getting data into application then of course we make sure that we return this particular connection otherwise if we have an error of course right here while opening uh, this particular connection we're going to catch our io exception guys this is it this is our connector class is going to establish a connection for us then we're going to move to a json downloader well, of course we shall require to download our data so the first thing that we're going to do of course we'll come over right here this particular class of course we're going to make it derive from async task okay why because of course we shall need to download our data from the background thread okay so that's it we shall uh, be needing to of course uh, download our data from the background thread so we're going to use right here an async task the first parameter this is the param right here which of course shall be passing to our task now for us in this case we shall not be passing anything so we have right here void and then this one right here is the actually the progress okay that shall be passing to our own progress update and then of course this is the uh, result of our doing background method okay the result of our task that shall be performing now in this case of course our task is downloading data that's what we're going to be performing in the background thread within this class i require these three first the context and then the json url and then of course our grid view and of course we're also going to need a progress dialog now the first three of course i require uh, they get passed to me via the constructor so i'm going to come right here i'll insert then i come inside my constructor i pass in the context i pass in my grid view of course i assign them to those particular fields then we come over right here inside our own pre-execute method what we're doing is simple first we're initializing our progress dialog of course uh, passing over there the title and then the message then we're calling the show method then of course we're going to need a doing background method this is of course uh, where we shall be performing our heavy computation which in this case is simply downloading our data so right here yeah we shall be re passing returning a string okay then of course lastly we're going to need a method right here we're going to course execute this particular method is going to take a JSON data, as which is a string. This particular JSON data actually is what shall be returned to us. So we're going to have right here JSON data. It's what shall be returned, of course, from our task that shall be performing over right here. The first thing we want to do inside this class is simple to make sure that we dismiss our progress dialog by calling the dismiss method. So we do so. Then of course we come over right here. We're going to create a simple method right here that's going to return for us a string. This is the method that of course is going to define the task we shall be performing, which in this case is right here downloading data. So for us you can see we are returning a string. Before we download data, we're going to need a connection. So yes, we're going to get this particular connection from our connector class. But then remember our connector class of course was returning for us an object so we assign it over there so we come right here we had to pass in a json url we do so first thing we want to do we want to uh, try to see if our connection has a by casting it to string then checking if it starts with uh, the word error now if you go back to our class you'll be, uh, see that if we had an error in case we had an error right here you can see that our staff were beginning with the term error so yes that's what we're going to do if that's the case then well we're simply going to stop there and then return that particular string okay that particular error which of course shall be shown to us in a toast otherwise if that's not the case we come inside our try catch block then we're going to come over right here and then the first thing of course we're going to do is come and then establish our connection so http url connection con equal to connection this is an object so we're going to pass course to java.net uh, dot http url connection so of course what we've done here is simple first of course we establish our connection right here 
by casting this our connection to http url connection just as i've said then of course we proceed on now we need to get a response code from our server okay to establish the state of our connection now first we call the conduct get response code then we check if it's okay then what are you going to do well we're going to proceed and download our data what about if that's not the case well if that's not the case we're going to come right here return this one and then uh, get a response message okay so it shall be displayed to us in a simple post otherwise of course we're going to catch our io exception over right here then of course let's proceed on to see how we download our data first we need an input stream so we establish we come right here get our input stream of course from our connection then pass it uh, to a buffered input stream then we're going to use the buffered reader to read our data so we come right here the, uh, instantiate it passing in an input stream reader instance which of course also we pass in an input stream uh, reader uh, no our input stream into our input stream reader okay so we come we declare two variables right here for the first one we declare our line it's a string this is what shall be holding we shall be reading data line by line we shall be holding them in this particular string then we're going to have right here our string buffer which is we're calling json data this is where we shall be appending our data so the first thing we do of course is to read now how do we read well we come read here line uh br dot read line this is going to uh, read for us a single line we assign it to this particular line and at the same time check if it's not null then we come append uh, this one right here to our json data so take note that this is a loop so that's it at the end of the day we can make sure that we close our buffer reader as well as our input stream then of course we return our json data we cast it to string so this this is it this is how we're gonna download our data of course now to implement it we simply come right here and then call the download method okay then of course we're going to come right here first we're going to come and check if json data dot to string okay okay that's with first we're going to check if it starts with the term if it starts with the term error then what are you going to do well let's get a string right here because in that case it shall be an error so we're simply going to equal to this and then of course at the is we can simply come and show a toast now for us the context that we're gonna pass here is the context that shall be given to us via the constructor and then other ways we come right here and then show our error if this is not the case then what are you going to do well of course we're going to come right here and then go ahead and then pass our data so we're going to come here and say pass but then to pass we need to our uh, json passer class so that's what we are proceeding into next otherwise this is how we're going to of course uh, download our data right here json pass a class this is what shall be passing our data first we're going to receive it from our json downloader we pass it we bind it to a grid view first we're going to require these three they shall be passed to us from our json downloader class then of course we shall also be showing a progress dialog while downloading this particular array list this is the list where of course shall be containing the data that we just downloaded so we download data we append them to this particular array list right here then we bind it to a grid view the first thing of course this class also we shall also be performing this task right here which is passing of our data in the background thread because depending on uh, the amount of data that you want to pass it can also be a time consuming operation so we do it in a background thread of course once we've done it in a, the moment we're doing it in the background thread we'll need to come override these three methods on pre-execute call before our doing background then of course on post execute call after doing background we come of course uh right here initial as a progress dialog then at the end of the day we want to make sure that we dismiss that particular progress dialog so that's it then of course what is the task that shall be performing of course it's our passing of our data so let's come here right. we create this particular method that's going to help us pass our data now to pass this is how we're going to pass it simple the myself we're making it return boolean take note right here that in our async task the result right here that shall be passed to our of course on post execute from our doing background is a boolean okay so for us this is a boolean right here that's going to check if we successfully passed or not now if successful then of course we bind other issue short toast so this one right here pass of course is going to 
uh, return for us uh, that one now let's come over right here the first thing we create a json array we pass all our json data into a json array then of course we declare json object these are array lists containing our users now our data of course consists of users each json objects object consists of a user a single user so we come loop through a json ob uh, array okay loop through our json array which of course is our j then as we loop through it we shall be getting json objects from it now ja.get json object we simply pass in the index of that particular item okay and then we get uh, that particular json object then of course to extract the name take note jo which is a json object dot get string we pass in the name now this particular name field right here you have to have it whatever you're passing right here you have to have it exactly uh, this way in your json data so for us we have this field we call, called name there are multiple fields there was id username e email etc if name so we're getting name if you wanted email you come right here enter email so then at the end of the day we come add it to our array list then of course return true if you're having an error we're going to have a json catch a json exception then return false so what we do here is simple of course we call right here pass our pass method then we come right here and say if is passed that is if we successfully passed then of course what do we do well we bind our data otherwise if that's not the case then we come over right here and then simply display a simple toast so of course in that case we are simply going to say unable to pass then of course uh, right here now what of if we've successfully passed if we successfully passed then this is how we're gonna bind our data this is a simple grid view we simply need an array adapter so we come in such array adapter take note we're passing the context you're passing the layout simple is item one then you're passing users we come set our adapter by calling the set adapter method then we come call our set on item click listener okay we come write a new adapter view dot on item click listener in this case of course our adapter view right here is this our grid view it's what we're handling uh, it's so we're going to use the on item click okay if in the last tutorial we were working with the spinner so in that case we looked at on item selected now for us if an item has been clicked we're going to come pass our context then users that get i we pass in the index to get that particular username or okay that particular user we pass it over right here we show it gives this is it this is how we're gonna pass our data and then of course right here just make sure that you implement this one then we come to a json downloader so in a json downloader what we're going to do we're going to implement come right here first execute our json parser so come right here say new json parser we pass in our context we need to pass in the context c and then our json data and then of course we also needed to pass in our grid view onto which our data shall be bound then we call execute method that's it that's it right here new json parser why okay let's see the argument okay okay so guys there's something we're forgetting right here let's come create a constructor for this one that's going to take a context a json data which is a string and then our grid view yes this is it then of course we come over right here we call the execute that's it what about our main activity this is simple first you specify the url that shall be connecting to this is the url i said this particular data right is you can also just use this particular url to access this particular data then of course grid view over here we initialize our grid view now we come call a new json downloader we insert it okay create a json downloader then of course pass in the context our json url grid view called the execute method is going to start it for us next guys make sure that in our manifest can you make sure that you've added this permission for connection to the internet now once we've done that one that's it let's run our project and then have a look here yeah, we're having our stuff now just in grid view we come make sure that your connection is on then click your fab button download json it downloads it then passes it right here we're having our data okay so this is it guys this is it you can see everything working fine uh, in this tutorial of course we've checked how to work with the grid view stay tuned in the next tutorial we're going to see how to work with the simple list view guys take care i'll catch you in the next tutorial make sure you subscribe make sure you like the video 
make sure you share it with friends and family take care i will catch you in the next tutorial